where I got things done and going into business is a surefire way of doing that. And ultimately, what my dad now, what my dad does now is he teaches young lawyers that work for him how to affect change and how to fight slow moving government bureaucracy. It's pretty good stuff. And that's why my dad chooses to live in Kosovo. He loves being out there and he loves the work that he's able to do. He also went on to explain to me something that I, I, I knew, but he reaffirmed it to me, and which is this. In government, you can hold on to your job waste the time and the money of citizens of the country you're in. And essentially, if you're in government, you can get a free ride by kissing the right ass and having yours kissed and taking as long as humanly possible to accomplish absolutely nothing at all. So for the old man, it was important for him to hit the ground running and do something that involved getting tangible results and not endlessly pretending to pontificate while the fate of millions hangs in the balance. And that is where we're at with healthcare.gov. The fate of millions hangs in the balance. Uh, for some like me, that fate is, well, it's a question of, ugh, how much a month is this going to cost me? Uh, back to the dollar menu again. Hello, McDouble, my old friend. Do you still taste like failure and shame? Oh, good. Some things never change. But for some, it's a question of, will I be able to continue my chemotherapy with doctors that I've entrusted my life to? Or will the glitches and endless umming and aahing and endless arguing and huge amounts of ineptitude perpetrated by the people whose salary I pay with my taxes ultimately cost me my life? Life is what you make it. It really is. I see so many people every single day. I talk to so many people every day that complain about the state of affairs. Obamanomics is killing me. Eh, let's be real. There's lots of things about the Obama's administration. It's not good. And you know what? The next guy or girl that gets in, there's going to be tons of stuff about them. That's not good. Look to yourself. If you are looking to an elected official to make changes in your life, if you're thinking that who's in office is going to make you wake up and feel different. Well, you're on a road to disappointmentville, my friend. Population you. When you get up in the morning, it doesn't matter who's in office. It doesn't matter who your local, national, regional elected officials are. Ultimately, it's down to you. This is the 80s show. So over this gay marriage thing, so over it. Now, before you uh, start jumping up and down, you know, being all like, AD. Hey, I thought you were for equal rights and things of that nature and gay marriage. Was it? Yeah, absolutely. 100 million percent. Yes, for sure. There is no reason whatsoever why anyone on this earth shouldn't be legally allowed to experience love and all that it entails equal in an equal manner to each other. Look, gay marriage. I'm so glad we're finally there. I'm so glad that's over and done with because think of the amount of hours that have been wasted on this, which should be a no brainer, not even a question. Can two gay people get married? Yeah, sure. They're people. They're Americans. They have rights. It's called equality. It's something that we shoot for on a regular basis around here. We've fallen short of the mark for years and years, but yeah, now let's get this over and done with. Think of the number of man and woman hours we can put back into being productive now that you don't have to march, now that you don't have to letter write, now that you don't have to do everything that you had to do to get us to a point where we were legally an equality, uh, legally an equal society in this particular respect. We've got a long way to go on a lot of other things, but now we can just shut the hell up about this and get on with our lives. And uh, like I've said in the past, if you have a problem with gay marriage, there's something really easy you can do. If you have a problem with gay marriage, if you have a problem with two gay people getting married, here's what you do. It'll never bother you again if you follow my instructions in this particular matter. If you're bothered by gay marriage, 
The solution is simple. Don't marry a gay person. It's nothing to do with you. It really, really isn't. But the reason I'm over the gay marriage thing is not because, oh, God, isn't it fantastic that we now have a semblance of equality floating around in this country. That's a good thing. Not over that part of it. That's a wonderful thing. The part of it that I'm over is people being awful to one another. Something happened when gay marriage got legalized. And you saw it. You saw it on your Facebook feed. Well, people are into giving gay people their rights and gay marriage. And I I know which friends I need to delete now. Let me select the rainbows. Delete, delete, delete. If you're a bigoted person that's against gay marriage, feel free to go ahead and delete me because I hate you and I think you should die. So ironically difficult to take. So sad that something that I feel like should have brought us closer together as a nation. Okay, cool. Gay people can get married. We can now move past that and just concentrate on being people, good people. Idiots are digging themselves in even deeper on both sides of the fence. Got an email from a listener called Jacob who told me he was at a uh, he was at an event around the time of Gay Pride. He saw gay guys spitting on a fire and brimstone preacher who was telling them they were all going to hell. This, my friend, is not progress. I get it. After being spat on for years, I 100% get it. But we're digging ourselves in deeper as a result of it when we were supposed to be able to move on. More on that in a second. Thank you so much for hanging out. Radio puts the spotlight on the police. The police were formed in London in 1977 after the band Curved Air broke up, leaving drummer Stuart Copeland looking to put together his own group. Gordon Sumner, a.k.a. A. Sting worked as a teacher and dug ditches, playing in jazz bands on the side. The two met at a jazz club and together with guitarist Henry Padovani formed the Progressive Trio. They played local clubs at first and released their debut single, Fall Out, later in 1977. After working with Andy Summers on a short-lived side band, Stontium 90, Sting and Copeland added him to the police's lineup. Padovani left the band by the end of 1977 and the group became a trio again, with all three lasting through the band's history. Copeland's brother backed the group's first album, recorded on a tight budget without a manager or a record deal. However, after a label executive heard Roxanne, the police signed a contract. Outlandish Demore was released in 1978 as their debut album and included Roxanne. It didn't become a hit in their native Britain until it was re-released in 1979, though they received lots of publicity when the song Can't Stand Losing You was banned from BBC Radio. All things police, info, music, and more are on iHeartRadio, keyword the police. iHeartRadio goes one-on-one with Mike Rutherford to discuss the art of songwriting. I've learned one thing over the years is that actually you can't control it. You can't force it, you can't analyze it, you can't worry about it. You just go and have a good time and mess around and then something comes along and you grab it. You know, you, you, it's something intangible. And if you try and make a program on how to do it and do it better, you get lost. So I just, it's, it's like a free form thing, which you just, you can't control. You just let it ride or not ride. And if it's not working, then you just have a break. That's what I've learned. Keep listening to iHeartRadio for more Mike Rutherford and all your favorite artists. Mike check one two one two. This is Concept Seven One Four, host of Wake the Flock of .net, the number one hip hop podcast in the world. You are now listening to AD on your radio. So I don't know if I was expressing myself clearly to begin with, but there's certain frustrations that I have, and I hope you have them too, because in this frustration, we might find a little bit of a silver lining, but there's certain frustrations that I deal with around this whole gay marriage thing. Look, the fact that it took this long for it to happen beyond me. 
should have been a basic human right a very long time ago, but we're slow on the uptake with things like equality and human rights in this country. As much as uh, the documents that our founding fathers came up with back in 1776 that defined yeah, the whole idea of liberty and justice uh, uh, for all seem to be glossed over on a regular basis. We're getting there. We're getting there slowly. But the gay marriage thing, that should have just been over and done with a long time ago. And now it's happened. Look, I, I don't know. I suppose it's naive of me not to ex- expect some teething problems. But something very profound happened to me when gay marriage got legalized, which was I just saw people digging in in the stupidest way. Stupidest way possible. I mean, it happened the day before gay pride. So that was going to be an awfully prideful pride. But I got an email from, I think it was uh, Jacob who listens. And Jacob, he was like, man, I don't know what's going on with this country. All for gay marriage. All for people having equal rights. Doesn't affect me. But I was at, uh, I was out and about. There was a gay pride event going on. Saw a gay guy spitting on a fire and brimstone preacher. The preacher standing out in the street telling them all they're going to burn. And they respond by spitting on them. Now, I get it. I really do. If you think that uh, you understand what it's like to be a persecuted minority in this country. If you think you understand what it's like to be gay. If you think you understand what it's like to be black, if you think you understand what it's like to be anything other than a white male in America, chances are you don't. Sam, story time Sam, who was on the show the other day, who grew up Jewish. I mean, you know, because he's Jewish. <laughs> he didn't really have a choice in the matter. I was like, yeah, I mean, but, you know, you're from a very progressive part of Los Angeles. There's no way that you ever experienced anti-Semitism growing up. He was like, well, there were those times where uh, the neighbors threw rocks at my head because I was Jewish when I was three. There was a time when our neighbor turned the hose on my dad because he was going to synagogue. This recently? You kidding me? It's nuts. My point is, we don't understand what it's like to grow up anything other than white and male, if we're white and male. We might do some reading. We might have some conversations. We might think we understand, but we really don't. So... If gay guys were spitting on a preacher telling them they were going all to hell, look, there's a very good chance that they probably spent a good chunk of their lives being spat on. And not metaphorically either. I get it. I do. If someone came up to me and told me I was a piece of crap and I was going to burn for all eternity in hell, well, actually, that's happened to me before, but... I wouldn't necessarily be the first one to hawk loogies, but I understand it. So I get people getting dug in like that. I also understand that people are scared of the things that they can't comprehend. I understand that there's a simple, good, bad, black, white narrative that helps people cope. Simple-minded people need a simple narrative to cope as they go through life. They need to know something is good or bad. They need to have clearly defined lines of this is right and that is wrong. And for those folks... When those lines get blurred, when change comes along, that's a frightening experience. If you're an idiot that needs a simple narrative to get your way through life, then when things change, it's a frightening experience. It's a frightening experience. Your foundations of everything you expect, know, and love, and understand have been shaken by something as simple as two people that have nothing to do with you being able to get married. So there's a certain amount of fear and loathing that exists. But the way people got dug in over the gay marriage issue... The way people got dug in over a flag, a piece of cloth. Your Facebook news feed, as the rhetoric said, was probably like uh, war between a Confederate flag and a bag of Skittles. That's what it looked like. And people dug in. People dug in with nasty hate speech on either side. If you don't support gay marriage, then you're a piece of crap that deserves to burn. If you support gay marriage, well, you're a piece of crap that is already burning. And it just made me sick to my stomach. 
after about a day of watching this stuff, I just had to unplug. I just had to go, oh, my God. I can't take this anymore. I didn't want to talk about it around the water cooler at the office. I didn't want to see it online. I didn't want to have people write me and say, let's talk about this on the show. And that's why I think it's good that we have a little time and distance from gay marriage being legalized in this particular instance. Because the issue for me, and I hope the issue for you, is not people's rights. It's not gay marriage. It's not one issue or the other. It's not, will a piece of cloth being banned end racism? No, it will not, by the way. The issue for me is I'm just over people being awful to each other. Just over it. It's ridiculous. Stop. Quit it. Grow the F up. Grown men and women beating the crap out of their 20s, 30s, and 40s acting like 6th graders. We're supposed to evolve past that. We're supposed to evolve past the Simeon throwing of feces, be it metaphorical or not. I feel like we're not that far away from it. Somebody asked me about it. They're like, what's your stance on this? What party are you in? You never say. What are you? And I was like, well, I'm, I'm neither. They're like, well, what do you mean? You have to be something. No, I don't. Man, there's no reason to define yourself politically. It's a meaningless title placed on something that just it declaring yourself a republican or a democrat or a libertarian or any of the different shades or flavors in between is the most pointless thing and you know why people want to slap a label on you because they want to rely on your knee-jerk reaction Ooh, you're a registered republican hopefully you vote you know right down the line republican on the entire ticket and local and state and national elections We can count on your vote because you're a registered Republican or a registered Democrat. You're a registered knee-jerk. You're a registered simpleton that is comforted by an easy-to-understand narrative. You know why it's pointless? You know why it's pointless declaring yourself a Republican or a Democrat? I think the first election my father was able to vote in, I think my dad voted for Kennedy back in the day. I want to say that was the first election he was old enough to vote in. My math, not so good, but let's just assume that. Kennedy was a Democrat. And when Kennedy was going to become elected, he had a rather large problem. And that was he couldn't count on the black vote. The black vote traditionally went to Republicans. Harkening back to Abe Lincoln freeing the slaves, I guess, but mostly Republicans were never going to vote Democrat because you know what Democrats were back in the time of my dad? One generation removed. That's it. Just one generation removed. Black people would never vote for Republicans because, uh, Democrats rather, because mostly they were KKK members in the Deep South. That's what a Democrat was. Just one teeny tiny generation back. So this whole idea of we're Republicans, son, we're Democrats, son, utterly and completely meaningless. So when I got this email saying, what the hell are you? How do you feel about this stuff? We have to be able to know what you are if we're going to listen to you on the radio. No, you don't. No, you don't. Because these labels are absolutely 100 million percent meaningless. Defining myself as a Democrat or Republican, defining yourself as a Democrat or Republican. In the space of one generation, the meaning of that can change so radically. One generation back, black people wouldn't vote Democrat because why? Because most Democrats were living in the Deep South and they were KKK members. They were cross burning, lynching KKK members. That's what being a Democrat meant in my dad's time. Not that long ago. So hanging on to a label. Why bother? This is why I don't define myself. I free myself from the shackles of a knee-jerk political reaction by knowing where my moral compass is true north is. As I hope, do you. But when I was asked to define myself politically, I was like, hmm, I'm in the me party. I do what I feel is right. I know what feels right, and I act upon that, regardless of party or person. And I hope that you do too, because that's a freeing thing. But mostly, mostly I told this person that was questioning me, asking me how I define myself politically. 
mostly I told them, look, I suppose fiscally, I'm a little bit conservative. Socially, I'm probably reasonably liberal. Does that make me a libertarian? Uh, maybe. But there's so many different flavors of libertarian, left-leaning, left leaning, right-leaning. And my main problem with declaring myself a libertarian is, oh, there's so many different flavors of it. Nobody really knows what it means. So it's an even more pointless label to put on yourself. And the other thing about declaring yourself a libertarian is, well, you know, people go, hey, you're, I'm a libertarian too. Why don't you come over to my house and look at my collection of AR-15s and we do bong rips? None of the above interests me. Thanks, I'll pass. So I avoid calling myself a libertarian. But I think the main thing, my main defining characteristic, and I hope your main defining characteristic too, politically speaking, whether you're left or right, and this is something I kind of came to the conclusion of post-gay marriage. My main thing is I'm just over people being awful to one another. I am just over people being terrible to one another. I'm just over people wanting to fight for the sake of a fight. You want to fit in. So you declare yourself a member of a side because that's easy to understand. That's simple to understand. That's a narrative that helps you exist in a world that is confusing. I'm clearly over here on the side of the white team. No, I'm, I'm clearly over here on the side of the red team. So we must disagree on absolutely everything. And it is our duty to fight. So many people. Oh, God, so frustrating. And the world that we live in as well. Media, radio, it's so easy to pander to people. The lowest common denominator makes the easiest buck. So many people that are just willing to, well, if the Democrats say it's red, I say it's blue. If the Republican say it's red, I say they're morons. Whatever the case may be. And I know that not too many people are going to uh, forge this particular path in, in the world of media because, like I said, it's not where the easy money is. But now more than ever, I think I want to rededicate this show a little bit to uh, trying to find common ground, trying to bring people together, trying to find the good in others rather than trying to look for anything you can to run them down. It's the gotcha game. Oh, you said this, you're a hypocrite. Oh, you did that, you're a hypocrite. Oh, you did... No, over it. Over it. I'm going to try and find the good in some folks. You know, I'm going to especially try and find the good in the folks that I disagree with. If they disagree with me, chances are they know something I don't. And maybe I can learn from them. Maybe I can find some common ground and maybe we can learn some stuff from one another. So if you disagree with any of the things that come out of my mouth now or in general on this show, thank you so much for listening. And I want to listen to you too. Tweet me, email me, ad at iheartmedia.com, or you can tweet me at adsxe. But we're all about finding the common ground here on this show, more than ever before. Not being awful to one another. And the good news is the common ground can usually be, usually be found over universal truths like boobs are great and fart jokes are funny. Thanks for hanging out. Every day you wait until you get washed away. USA Headline News. I'm Kelly Sloan. Defense Secretary Ash Carter is defending President Obama's strategy to defeat Islamic State militants. Yesterday, President Obama met with leaders at the Pentagon to discuss the plan. If we try to do everything ourselves all across the Middle East, all across North Africa, we'll be playing whack-a-mole. Uh, and uh, there will be a whole lot of unintended consequences. But Arizona Senator John McCain criticized the president, claiming the U.S. is not doing enough. The threat environment continues to evolve in ways that clearly, in my view, demand a reassessment of the administration's current calendar-driven drawdown of U.S. forces. The Armed Services Committee chairman held a hearing today in the Senate. Today is the deadline for the Iran nuclear deal, but talks continue. Tehran wants sanctions lifted in exchange for a promise to curb nuclear development. The sides say there are still deep differences. This is USA Headline News.
In the beginning, man had to painstakingly brave the elements and scale the highest mountains just to deliver the good news. Hear ye! Hear ye! Now they just go to ChristianPress.com. It's fast, affordable, and much easier on the joints. Quickly and painlessly deliver your message with ChristianPress.com. ChristianPress.com connects you directly to thousands of journalists, media outlets, news networks, and social media platforms, ensuring your message hits the mark. Every time, your audio and digital content will be professionally produced, so your business or organization's message stands head and mountains above the rest. So reach your target market and get the results you need with Christian Press. Press.com or call 316-644-6185. That's 316-644-6185. Friends, Romans, and countrymen, lend me your... Okay, Skippy, you can get off the mountain now. We found ChristianPress.com. Spread your good news. Visit ChristianPress.com. Trending. Check baseball games of note. The Twins and Orioles win extra innings in Minnesota. It ended with one swing. 2-0 pitch. He swings and hammers. Left field and deep. Open up the gates. We're going home. Vote Dozier. Vote now. Vote a walk-off win. 4-2 of the final and 10. Call the Twins Radio Network. Brian Dozer with the two-run walk-off homer wins it for Minnesota. Pirates walk off with a 2-1 win over the Padres. Pedro Alvarez has the game-winning RBI single in the bottom of the ninth. Braves beat the Brewers 5-3. Milwaukee's eight-game winning streak is snapped. Mets scored three in the top of the ninth to beat the Giants 3-0. San Francisco has dropped seven in a row. College football, Florida State has dismissed suspended freshman quarterback DeAndre Johnson. He's off the team after a video emerged of him punching a female student in the face at a local bar. In the NBA, the Mets Memphis Grizzlies have re-signed free agent center Mark Gasoli gets a five-year deal worth $110 million. I'm Eddie Garcia. We are Fox iHeartRadio puts the spotlight on Jim Morrison. The Doors retreated to the studio where they sounded musically rejuvenated on the hard-rocking Morrison Hotel in 1970 and 1971's L.A. Woman. Are you an Supporting tours were marked by continued police harassment, and afterwards, a depressed Morrison left the country with his wife Pamela, eventually settling in Paris to unwind and write poetry. the support of his bandmates, Morrison spiraled irrevocably out of control, and he was found dead in his bathtub on July 3, 1971, the victim of an apparent heart attack. He was only 27 years old. Keep listening to iHeartRadio for more Doors coming up. iHeartRadio goes one-on-one with Bob Seger to discuss how having kids has changed his life. It made finding time to write a lot more difficult because uh, it's just so much fun to be around. You know, and and they love having me around, and and uh, you know, you just can't. Certain things you got to see. You know, those those little league games, and and the uh, you know the, the soccer, and the, my daughter's cheerleading, acting. You know, singing in shows, both of them. You know, uh, yeah, it's just stuff you can't miss. Keep listening to iHeartRadio for more Bob Seger and all your favorite artists. Go ahead, favorite the show, and enjoy AD on the go. iHeartRadio presents AD. Yeah, alrighty then. We are joined today by uh, host of the number one hip hop podcast in the world, Concept Seven One Four, who is here not so much to uh, sit in on the show. We'll have him back to do that in another time. But Concept Seven One Four is a guy who. How did I how how did I run across your work? Oh, it was Wax. It, I uh, I I noticed a tweet from one of my favorite rappers, Wax, saying, "Hey, I was on this podcast. You should take a listen." And it was Concept Seven One Four's podcast, "Wake the Flock Up." And I shot him an email and said, "Hey, I really like your work. Um, you should come on the show." And he has been, and we've been super happy to have him. But Concept Seven One Four has a uh, why he would be interested in going into radio versus the work he does as a private investor. 
investigator, which is very cloak and dagger and very exciting. It's kind of beyond me and Funkhauser. But he, uh, besides being the host of an incredible, incredible podcast, has a burning desire to learn everything he can about a more traditional radio background. So you're just kind of sitting in on the show shadowing Funkhauser today, learning what the duties of a producer would be as you get ready to take over a good chunk of the Western Hemisphere with your radio skills. Correct concept? That is correct. He is my mm. sensei. He I is your Yoda. I am, I am his Danny son to uh, <laughs> Mr. Miyagi here. What? What is that? Is that a cow? <laughs> I don't know. Okay. See, this is the, this yeah. is the stuff that I need to learn. This right. See, so you I didn't know learn. where. You need to find out where the animal soundboard is. Big because we cattle. tackle the big yeah. issues. Yeah, <laughs> we tackle the big issues on this show. Yep. Funkhauser is his Yoda. Coffee, you get me. We, we <laughs> two creamers, you must. <laughs> two creamers, you must put in it. Yeah. <laughs> Donuts, you will bring me. <laughs> I did promise you bagels, Funk, and I feel bad because I ate them on the way over here. Ah, that's all right. To stay awake from the treacherous odyssey from Anaheim <laughs> to beautiful Sherman Oaks, California. There is no Krispy Kreme. <laughs> there is Dunkin' Donuts or not Dunkin' Donuts. Exactly. See, I like that. That's good. That's good. <laughs> so uh, as we are um, as we are picking up new skills and learning new duties and you are shadowing Funkhauser, we thought it would be a kind of a cool thing for you to uh, do what Funkhauser usually does and take responsibility for bringing us the events of today in our segment, My Witness News, in no way, shape, or form fair, certainly not balanced. I am honored. Concept 714, A, how are you? And B, what is going on in the world? Oh, and by the way, hello. Hey, wow. Are you on Periscope? I am. I am on Periscope as of now, yes. Only because, uh, uh, you know who else is? Wax is on Periscope. Nice. And um, I feel like bailing out of the show because I just got a, a notification from Periscope that Wax is live for the first time ever on oh. Periscope. Yeah, go ahead. I'll, I'll take care of the rest of the show. You go ahead and follow <laughs> Wax, who is wildly more entertaining than I am. Uh, um, Funkhauser, how, how you doing? How's our boy coming yeah, along? Good, good, man. It's it's great Excellent. because I don't have to do anything today, but point at things, and you know, <laughs> it's a, I feel like I'm on un- undercover boss, and he's my boss. So I'm doing the, well, I'm good. doing it as good as I can here. I push this I, button I, now. It's my uh, it's my it combines my love of pushing uh, shiny buttons with uh, telling people <laughs> what to do. So, oh, <laughs> okay. Wow. Now that we've worked out that uh, Concept 714 is a dictatorial squirrel with ADD, let's get on with the news. Uh-uh, 9.38 in the morning. That's oh. 24 away from the top of the hour. I can't oh. do math very well, obviously. That, that's 22, but pucker attempt. Kim Kardashian threatened to uh-huh. sue a photo agency that is selling naked photos of her for an invasion of privacy. Yeah, well... I would believe that the photo agency could reasonably fight back, pointing out that Kim Kardashian has no privacy left to invade. Like we've all we've all seen it, all of it. That, that's how you got famous in the first place. Blah, 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 blah. That's oh. how we know of Kim Kardashian in the first place. There's no privacy left to invade, and, and she puts her hoo ha on display on a regular basis. <laughs> in other words, the, they, uh, the check wasn't big enough. I think <laughs> yeah, it was the real I, issue. I guess so. Yeah, no, no, we are we are all aware that the flaps have gone back to manual, oh, so to speak. And, I don't know and, uh, what that refers to. <laughs> <laughs> it, we're talking about flying planes. The flaps have gone back to oh, manual okay. post baby birth, and we know this because she uh, did those completely naked photos, you know, to break the internet. A- anyways, yeah, no privacy left to invade. Next, speaking of wild flaps, <laughs> mm-hmm. Bill, see that's called a segue funk. Bill Cosby testified <laughs> under oath. <laughs> In 2005, that he got quaaludes with the intent of giving them to young women he wanted to have sex with. Yeah. So it's not going to be good for ticket sales to his shows. Now, look, where there's that much smoke, clearly there's a certain amount of fire. I mean, it, and it does break my heart because, well,. I feel like I learned such fantastic life lessons from the Cosby show. Like, eh, you know, grew up in the 80s and 90s watching Cosby with uh, typically distracted 80s and 90s parents. I learned all I need to know from the Cosby show. And uh, it just makes me question the moral code by which I live my life finding all this stuff out. And clearly, like I said, where there's that much smoke, there is that much fire. But I wanted to point out that Quaaludes... Now, I don't know too much about it because they're like a 
Quaaludes are sort of like a 70s drug. And weren't they legal for a little while? Do we, any, anyone, Funkhauser concept, do we know anything about lewds? Seems like they were uh, easier to get back then. They were, and now they don't make yeah. them anymore. But what do I know? Yeah. Probably I don't some know, kind, of, like, uh, kind of like a sleep aid, I'm sure, right? I, I'm not sure exactly what they were for, whether they were an anti-anxiety or whether they were just a sedative or uh, whatever, the, a muscle relaxant, something like that. But they were the recreational drug of choice back in the day. Now, Quaaludes, I, I would hazard a guess that in the maybe 70s, possibly 80s, people that were doing Quaaludes, if you got a bunch of quaaludes and you're going to give them to a woman that you wanted to have sex with, that was sort of like how you partied back then. Yeah. Let's do some lewds and get after it. Now, if he was using them the way people use roofies to drug people and have sex with them that they don't want to have, then that is rapey, rape, 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 and that's definitely not cool. But the whole sort of like, you know, people that come from the background of the 70, 70s getting lewds to give people that you're going to bang, I don't necessarily find that to be that incriminating but you know look we realize that bill cosby is not the fine upstanding gentleman that he was painted to be for the last 40 or so years and we were all looking for a smoking gun and this might be it i just don't know if it's as smoking as a lot of people think it is do you think he mixed them with pudding (laughs) i think that would be the real travesty here if he did uh, not, like, I would be disappointed uh, if he did not mix them with it's some a little kind of bit of pops. A little bit of vanilla, a little bit of chocolate. Dip, 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 dip. <laughs> because it's like the pudding pops. Because no, you cannot talk Bill Cosby and not do a horrible impression. You're with me, right? Uh, that, 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 but that was a good impression. I, I Say quaaludes I, like Bill Cosby. Quaaludes in the pudding pops. Had him not too gangster. Just a big mouth white boy prankster. Never been to jail, never shot a nine, never smack a hoe, but I know how to have a good time. I grew up in the suburbs. I went to private school. I stayed mostly out of trouble. Mostly I obeyed the iHeartRadio shines the spotlight on Genesis. After having replaced Anthony Phillips and John Mayhew with Phil Collins and Steve Hackett, the classic Genesis lineup was in place, and the band went on their now legendary 1971 tour, a colorful lineup of strange performances. It was with Foxtrot, however, that Genesis scored their first major critical success. Selling England by the Pound in 1973, soon made number three in the UK charts, gave the band a reputation in America, and also provided their first UK hit single. A year later, Genesis, now big-time rock superstars, released the concept double album, The Lamb Lies Down on Broadway. This album was also the last one to be made by the original Genesis lineup. Keep listening to iHeartRadio for more Genesis and all your favorite artists. Excuse me, do you know how to get to Maine and Maple? How's that cook? How do you change the ringtone? How much does this cost? Does this bus stop at Elm Street? We ask questions everywhere in life, except... Any questions? Um, no. At the doctor's office, ask questions. What is this test for? Are there any side effects? Questions lead to better health care. Go to ahrq.gov for a list of 10 questions everyone should know. Questions are the answer. Public service announcement brought to you by the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services and the Ad Council. Delivering fascinating subjects, interesting talk, and boobs and fart jokes. AD on iHeartRadio. Alrighty then. We're going to roll through a little bit more news, and then we will, uh, well, let's all dump on Trump a little later on in the show. Um, (laughs) 
<laughs> he said after opening up with a soliloquy about how we're going to try and find the good in people that we don't understand and common ground between one and all. Let's make fun of the guy with the bad hair. All right, let's uh, and the huge let's get bank on with the news. account. Which I think yes. it's it's why we make fun of him. Because no one feels bad for Trump, right? Hot daughter, no. hot bank account. He, I don't know, man. I, He'll like, be fine. That's a little weird. I, if, I, if I have a daughter, I don't think I'm ever going to take any amount of comfort or pride in the fact that she's hot. That, that, I don't know. Do you like it when your daughter's hot? I don't have kids. I, I prefer do you, do you my, chil- my, 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 well, uh, you know, uh, my daughter is the most gorgeous thing in the world, but, you know, that that's not how I'll describe her to other people. Oh, she's horrendous. Some kind of, some kind of morphic uh, breath defect to the face. Just un- untouchable, guys. Untouchable. I don't think that you're going to, uh, Ever, I, well, I hope that you're never going to talk about your daughter in terms of, oh, my daughter's the best. She's so hot. <laughs> like, I sincerely hope <laughs> he, that never happens. Yeah, well, it's not like Mackenzie Phillips or anything, you know, but uh, yeah, I love my daughter to death. So. What, oh, what? wow. Mama and the Papa's incestual reference. Well played, <laughs> Concept 714. Well played. That's why I get paid um, the zero bucks. Yeah, that's why I get paid the medium dollars. <laughs> um, so let me ask you this. Yes. Uh, I, I always, I, when I think about having a daughter, I think about the, like, I would never want my daughter to be hot. Like, I, mm. I wouldn't. I, I wouldn't want my daughter. I, w- I would want my daughter to be, you know, um, no, obviously not a train wreck. I'd like my daughter to be uh, attractive enough to get by in the world and feel good about herself. But I don't think I would ever want my daughter to be hot. Because once you're the hot chick, that's sort of all you are. And you have to fight. And, and I'm not saying this from my perspective. I look for the deeper meaning behind all the hot chicks that I uh, <laughs> ogle. Um, but uh, but I, I think when you are sort of like just a chick that's hot, that's who you become. Like society makes you like, oh, she's so hot. What does she do? What does she think? Where did she go to school? She is so hot. And then girls do the same thing. Like, oh, she's so pretty. Man, that's what she is. And you become a pretty person. That's what society makes you. And you have to have a, you have to be very self-possessed and have a very strong sense of self to not let that, to not play into that a little bit, especially when you're younger. So I really hope that if I do have a daughter, she's, you know, attractive enough to where she can feel good about herself, but not, I I, I think it's actually like a, a tough way to go to be labeled the hot chick. I think that would be hard work. Oh, yes. We all know how difficult hot people have it in life. You're absolutely right. Well, yeah. No. <laughs> Macy's dropped, Don- <laughs> dropped Donald Trump's menswear line last week. Right. So yeah. They would no they, longer uh, carry it. Yeah, Macy's is uh, one of many companies that has cost Donald Trump millions after his, uh, some say, racist announcement on the fact that he was going to be running for president. It doesn't matter, though. Macy's might have dropped Donald Trump's menswear line last week, but it was immediately picked up by the folks over at Gap Racist. Go on. (laughs) It's a blowout. (laughs) A New York 9-11 firefighter won $5 million in the lottery. Saw that, yeah. saw that. Like, and this is a guy that sustained mm-hmm. lung damage during nine yeah. eleven, and I don't know. Just to uh, reaffirm that sometimes good things can happen to good people. He won five million dollars in the lottery. But before you go getting too excited about uh, life, the universe, and everything being all sunshine and rainbows, remember Kim Kardashian worth eighty five million. So the world still sucks. There is no God. Go on. I want more money. <laughs> Four out of five visitors to national parks are white. Mm. <laughs> I don't know how they gather that statistic, but I, I, don't know. I guess it's look, safe for Donald. They looked I around. guess it's safe. I guess it's safe for the Donald if he wants to go camping. <laughs> yeah, he'll fit. He'll, uh, he'll fit right in. The four out of five visitors to national parks are white, and really, really, really white if they see a bear. Uh, um, <laughs> Concept seven one four. You're not white. Do you go to national parks? Uh, I do not go to national parks only because uh, I have things to do. Right. <laughs> I'm, I'm rather busy. I would love to Rather, go to a national park. I, I would love to if, see. If you did, ha- I'm just trying to discover whether or not there's truth to, the, to this statistic ah, because you will never see me willingly in a national park. Maybe I'll drive through it with the windows up and the right. AC on, right, but right. I am one of the last great true indoorsmen. I hate dirt. I hate uh, animals. I hate allergies. I hate the, the idea of getting bitten or stung by anything. Don't like the idea of national parks, and I'm about as white as they come. So uh, what about you? If you had more free time, if you weren't trying, so... Uh, diligently to accomplish so much with your life would you be spending time in national parks uh, uh, do they allow beer in national parks <laughs> um what well, uh 
Von Kaiser, you I, like beer, and and you you seem to like the outdoors more than us. So, have you been to a national park, Whitey McWhite, yeah, a lot th- over there? I, I think so. Yeah, yeah. I, uh, I'll ask my cousin, the tourist at Yellowstone National Park, and I think I think you can have concealed beer. Concealed beer. How about right. that? <laughs> See, my, my people don't go anywhere we can't drink. <laughs> my people, uh, and I can say that you cannot say that. I was uh, just about to say, what, what, technically speaking, what are your people? Like, ethnically, what is your origin? Uh, it's still up for debate uh, because I'm too dark to be uh, uh, anything. Well, I'm Hispanic. I want to break right, it down. you're Hispanic. I mean, if okay. you really want, if you want to break me down, Adrian. Yeah, it's a rocky record. So uh, now I can go out into the world, having yes. been reliably informed this by my Hispanic friend. Your token friend. Now here. I can go out in the world and be like, okay, so... Um, <laughs> Yeah, no. Uh, Hispanics won't go there because they can't drink. Hispanics don't go anywhere they can't drink. The way this Good. is shocking no. news to me because don't you <laughs> don't don't you guys get terribly like sunburned right away? Like, why isn't national park? There's no tarp. I do, up, man. Know, like, I like I, I like a lot of people tan. I don't. I stroke immediately. <laughs> like just, I just go straight from like pasty <laughs> pale and white to like uncomfortably red and burnt. Then I blister. It all falls off, and everyone else is this beautiful golden brown color where yeah. they look like they live outdoors, and they're so much more. They, they just look like a more appealing human being than I do as I blister in the sun. <laughs> Sucks. I like that. With hey, well, speaking of blistering, this is seventy three percent of men nicknamed their junk. Um, I appreciate your attempt to segue there, and it is a good one. But if we're talking about junk blisters, I think you need to bail on doing the show and go straight <clears throat> to the doctor to have the old uh, <laughs> to, to have the old <laughs> wedding tackle checked out because blisters and junk shouldn't be involved in the same sentence unless it is does not have any. Um, hey, which is what I meant. The two words. <laughs> Speaking of things I don't have, uh, no. Right. See, even that's a junk terrible blisters. Because it's just okay. <laughs> so seventy three percent of guys name their junk. Ad. Uh, I don't. You don't name your junk. I've always hated that. I, I was with one girl that nicknamed my junk once, and I, I hated it. What was hated the nickname? It. I got to know now. Uh, don't listen nickna- to him, Little Funky. <laughs> <laughs> little Funky. I like um, that. Well, I, I can't remember exactly, but I, I believe the nickname that she had for my junk was Mr. Extremely Disappointing, but wow. whatever. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, was, it, uh, was, it, uh, was it just simply like the sound? Uh. Yeah. No, no, it was uh-huh. just, Right. Yeah, right. how's it going down there, Mister Sad Trumpet? <laughs> wah 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 wah. Uh, <laughs> That's terrible. <clears throat> Go on. France more, recently. More okay, France recently warned visitors to the U.S. not to make edgy jokes because Americans are too sensitive. Yeah, that's how far we've mm. fallen as a PC nation. People from other countries are being warned not to come here and make edgy jokes because we're too sensitive. I can speak for all of us when I address Europe and indeed the rest of the world when I say Americans have thick skin. Thanks to our diets, very, very thick skin. Not only are we sensitive about everything, we're fat. Maybe if we lost some weight, we would be less sensitive. You know, I, I'm sensitive. upset that the French are making fun of us. <laughs> you know, that's yeah. what upsets me. If it was like the yeah. Germans or like the Russians, or like the tough Europe, I'd be cool with it. But the French? Yeah. yeah. Really? Yeah. This is, yeah. Come like on. The great surrenderers. Jesus Christ. <laughs> French military training. What is Once that? With Once with motion, guns down, arms up. I saw in there. Uh-huh. Um, go on. One, More wine, please. <laughs> the, the kids. Okay. Uh, George W. Bush turned 69. Yeah, he did. Yesterday. <laughs> Uh, he now has that mission accomplished banner in his bedroom and unfurls it once the Viagra kicks in. <clears throat> oh, wow. Oh, well, <laughs> almost, almost, <laughs> almost at the point where it kicks in. It, lo- it looks like it's going to work, so let's put the sign up. <gasps> oh, God. Mission accomplished. I like mission that. Mission accomplished. Yeah, well, mission impossible for him, I'm sure. All right. So uh, let's talk a little bit about Trump, shall we? He's losing money left, right, and center as a result of the fact that he uh, he made his announcement that he was coming out, that he was running for president. And uh, it involves, well, it involves saying like, hey, basically, I'm going to keep all the Concept 714s out of this country by building a giant fence. I have the best contractors in the world. And people um, around the world went uh, racist. <laughs> very, 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 ooh, very, very racist. Yeah, no, we're going to, uh, we, we, yeah, people have been pulling out, nations, entire nations have been pulling out of his Miss Universe or Miss World or, or whatever pageant. Concept 714. Yes. AD, um, really now quick, that we have, yes. who's going to build that fence? 
really well, well put to mind who's it's not going to be like jews right or asians hispanics are going to build that fence because that's the cheapest labor so ironically his best contractors are the people he's trying to keep out right uh, I, well yeah no, i mean the uh that, so you know who we'll install you. secret doors that which is like <laughs> pass a, a i don't know like a note underneath like a you know three three stories there you know make sure you knock twice i'll let you in kind of thing uh, that's what we do uh, least- Lisa H. just tweeted us saying that uh, Donald Trump's hair looks like piss-colored cotton candy. Wow. <laughs> and you know what? It really does. It does. Uh, so, uh, all right, super quick, because I got some stuff to get through. But um, you are of Hispanic origin, we know, because you don't go anywhere that you can't drink, uh, is- allegedly, by your own definition. <laughs> Donald Trump, what he said during his uh, announcement that he was going to run for president. Mm-hmm. Racist? I, yes. I was drunk at the time, so I cannot vouch whether <laughs> it was racist or not. Uh, yes, it's obvious. It's obvious racism. Racist. I think. <laughs> I think what what I think what went down is this is someone who has gotten to the point where he can run for president. Right? He's been rich enough, successful enough. I think he really didn't think that there was anything that was going to stop him from achieving that goal, which speaks to his person in a good way. I think, like his self, uh, you know, worth. To himself, yeah, no one, it's just so no one high could ever that... accuse no one could ever <laughs> accuse him of not having enough confidence. NASCAR right, right. is the latest corporation to distance itself from Donald Trump because of his controversial statements on immigration. Spokesman says they'll no longer hold their season-ending awards ceremony at the Trump National Doral, Miami. They said we looked at everything we saw coming down and what we heard from our sponsors and partners, and we feel like. This is what we should be doing. And that led us to this decision. NASCAR is also asking that its fans refrain from flying the Confederate flag. Naturally, people are freaking out about it. Donald Trump also was on Fox and Friends over the weekend. I don't know if you saw it. And he said, I was quite surprised by NASCAR because these are people that want to stop illegal immigration and they don't want to see crime. He also said that if you talk about illegal immigration, you're called a racist and insisted that he, quote, loves the Mexican people and the spirit of Mexicans. There's video from the uh, Fox and Friends appearance, which is worth checking out. Meanwhile, the Reels Network has picked up the Miss USA pageant after it was dumped by NBC. And two more countries have pulled out of the Miss Universe pageant. And that's how uh, these two countries are different from Eddie Murphy when with a transvestite hooker, by the way. Um, Panama and Costa Rica are joining Mexico in skipping this year's event because of Trump's comments. And... America Ferreira wrote a long letter thanking Trump for energizing the Latino vote. Part of it read, quote, remarks like yours will serve brilliantly to energize Latino voters and increase turnout on Election Day against you and on any any other candidate who runs on a platform of hateful rhetoric. Thank you so much for hanging out. We'll be back tomorrow. Thank you, Concept 714. Thank you, Funkhauser.